I tell you, we had, a he we had a heck of a crowd out there. We came jogging out to start the game, and I mean, a packed house, and uh, I, I feel I feel bad for our fans, um, the way that we coached and played, um, and uh, I, I apologize to them. Great crowd, great atmosphere, and um, we didn't do a very good job of coaching, and uh, certainly didn't do a very good job of executing. And true, I mean, I'm looking at the sheet here just to double check, but so we lost the turnover battle. Um, we we had way too many penalties, and um, we couldn't rush the ball. If you take away the quarterback's draws, we didn't rush the ball well enough to to amount to anything. Um, but we've got to do a better job of protecting the quarterbacks and giving those guys a chance to function. Um, it looked, just from being on the sideline, looked really difficult for them. And then on the defensive side, early we gave up a few, um, what I call easy third down conversions on the throws where we didn't get covered down. And we, we've got to stop the run. Uh, we, we came in worried too much about them throwing the ball, which is really what they had done. And um, they got us running the ball. And we, we got to stop the run first and then rally back and, and deal with the pass. So um, we got out coached and out executed. Um, I told the team that we'll come in tomorrow. We'll grade it. We'll look at it. We'll be critical on ourselves. We'll be critical on the, uh, the players. Everybody has to own it. Um, we've got to get through it. It's extremely difficult when you don't play well. And then um, we, uh, we get to Monday, we get a workout, we've got to get ready to play next game. Can't do anything about the last one except learn from it and move forward. It's really that simple. I know it seems a little simple, but that's kind of where you're at, where we're at right now. I had mentioned during the week this is a good football team. Our team was made aware of that. I told them multiple times during the week this is a really, really good football team. They're physical. They play good. They, their coaches do a good job. Uh, so there's no surprise of what happened. Um, they, they were made aware this was a good football team. Mike, did you run down that litany of things? What, what's most disappointing to you about the way this played out today? Well, we couldn't, we couldn't protect. It didn't look like we could protect well enough to get the ball thrown. We, we stayed on the run most of the night, and then we couldn't stop the run. Based on that, on that thought, does it make it harder to assess what your quarterbacks did, like right now or after watching film? Either way. Um, I mean, I would have to watch it because I can't tell. Like, I'm not looking directly in the backfield. So I'm looking at different things, and I look up, and we're either running or we go down. So, we, so it's hard for me to tell right now. But knowing, knowing that going in, even watching, even watching the film, knowing that that guy, your quarterback probably knows there's pressure coming somewhere, does that – I guess impact what they're able to do. Oh yeah, sure. I mean, we got to protect the quarterback, right? I mean, when if the quarterbacks are on the run all the time, it's hard for them to play. Um, so I've got to we got to look at it and and uh, make a decision. But what you're saying, I guess, in other words, yes, you're correct. What can you do at this point in the year, offensive line wise, to, to help protect the quarterbacks better, to help get the right um, um, We there's some different things we can do protection wise. Um, we have to – first we have to identify how it happened, different – the integral part of the different protections, what's causing it, and try to stay away from that. And then function and run concepts that we think that we're good at based on who we are. I know that's not a good answer, but it's hard to answer that other than until I look at it and see what happened, it's hard for me to really say. But there's answers. We just got to get to them. I know you shuffled some guys around on the O line mm -hmm. in the third quarter. Uh, is that just a, a case of looking for the right mix? Um, uh, yes. Um, I'm just trying to help ourselves a little bit. Um, you know, we were struggling, as you could tell. So when that happens, you're trying to come up with solutions and answers, which is not the best situation you want to be in. Mike, how'd you split up quarterback reps tonight? It seemed like Gunner might have gotten a, a fifth drive there, and Garrett didn't maybe um, get it. When we came in at half, uh, they didn't want to count his last drive. Um, I don't know, I don't mean what was it a minute left or something, so they just rolled it over. 
quarterback do something? It seems he is splitting up evenly into thirds. Could a quarterback do something outside of injury to not play all four of his drives or not play his third? Like, is there a reason you would pull somebody early? Um, I'm not following you. If they're playing their third of the game, would you ever pull them early before they reach their third of the game? Um... Well, we haven't had to cross that bridge. Um, I, I guess I couldn't say yes or no on that. It'd be hard for me to, to say. Um, we'll, we'll, go, we'll watch this tomorrow in the morning and figure out how they did based on the support that they had and then try to move forward from there. 26 rushing yards in the first uh, half again, 13 attempts. Like you said, many of those were quarterback scrambles or draws. I mean, was that the kind of the game plan going in to, to, to pass more and, and be more aggressive through the air? Or what, what no, was I mean, we're, we're trying to um, rush the ball some, but, I mean, you could probably tell from up there, they're squeezing everybody down in there. So there's an extra guy pretty close to the box from start, right from the start. Where do you feel South Alabama's physicality the most tonight? I thought that their offensive line blocked us. And um, they had a half-man advantage in the running game. Uh, but to answer your question, I thought they, they blocked us up front. Mike, how do you keep your, your players up? Because in the first part of the game, it seemed like either a a drop pass or an untimely penalty just took all the wind out of their sails and they kind of slot slid a little bit in their performance. What do you, what do, you do? Um, keep working on catching the ball, but you're right. We had things rolling um, and we dropped a pass and we had things rolling and we got a penalty and then a couple times we had things rolling and, and bobbled, a nut, bobbled a pass. And um, what I told the team, I'll tell you guys, is there was enough to share. It wasn't just, but it sure looked like every time it was something. And the coaches are just as responsible. So the, we've got to do a better job. They've got to do a better job executing. But we never could get anything going from what you're saying, and that is correct. Last week, the, the second half, y'all came out and played really well in that second half. What you what was the message this this time at halftime, and maybe why did things go so well in the second half? Well, we had to play faster. We we're behind three scores basically. I mean, however you add it up to a certain extent, so we had to play faster. And unfortunately, with them still rushing the ball well, that creates problems because the clock's running. Um, and you know, right before halftime, we were doing some things to try to help ourselves in the run. They caught us in man coverage, hit us on the big pass. So. Um, let me make this real clear. They out-coached us, and they out-executed us, but we didn't get any breaks. A combination of that made a perfect storm. Stribling took a big hit there in the first quarter. How, how, how was he, and how did he kind of respond? Stribling? Yes. Um, I think they're just being cautious with, uh, I mean, I didn't get a, an update um, as far as an injury. I think it's just being cautious with um, not a serious injury level of concern right now considering the way tonight played out and the fact that you've got big 12 play on your doorstep yeah well I talk about this every week it's it's going to get more competitive every week as we go through and um, we have to I mean I'm going to go back to what I said we have to put this game to rest and we have to make sure we can stop the run and we can have to continue to be able to rush the ball so we can have a balanced offense and I know that sounds simple but that that'll really help a lot Surprised, befuddled, angered about not being able to run the ball better considering the way you guys focused on that in the offseason? Um, well, no, I want to run the ball better. Um, I mean, I'm not angry. The other thing that worked against us, Jen, is we got behind. So now you become a little more one-dimensional than, than you want to be. So that didn't help us in you know, trying to accomplish run because you run and the new rule, you get a first down, the clock keeps running. So if you want to try to conserve time, you got to either um, move, um, catch a pass, and drop a pass, or not, or an incomplete pass more than running because the clocks just keep going. So that worked against us a little bit. Like you said on Monday, that you, you thought South Alabama was a team that would come out and be physical and mm -hmm. punch you in the mouth. Were, were they more physical than you maybe anticipated? Um, no, no, I thought they played about like a, what, the way I thought they would. Um, how do you how do you kind of get? I guess the offensive line, really everybody to, to match that physicality. 
Um, we practice that way. I know, you know, you guys are going to think this is funny, but we practice better this week than we did last week. We, we, we practiced good on Tuesday and Wednesday this week, so I, um, that part was a little confusing to me. Um, our Tuesday practice a week ago before Arizona State was average at best. We practiced really good this Tuesday and Wednesday. We were physical and we practiced pretty well. Overall, one of the bright things was I thought we tackled better. Now, some of the tackling took place too far down the field, five, four or five yards, but we didn't I didn't see him miss a lot of tackles, so we did improve in that area, I thought. But then again, I got to watch the tape. Based on what Gunner had done on his, his last possession when y'all finally scored, did you at all consider keeping him in the game? Um, no, not at that point, just based on the, dis the discussions we had um, before that. So uh, what we have to do is we have to take the combination of the three of them and evaluate and grade them based on what their opportunities were um, with protection or without protection. Um, that's that's all we can do um, is is move forward from there. I know game flow made it tough. Like you said, you were trying to come back, but looking at the stat sheet, in, in hindsight, do you regret Ollie Gordon only getting three carries? Yeah, we got behind. Yeah. That, that's what got us, right? I mean, I just what I just said. So. Um, I'm not making excuses for anything, but that is because we were behind by basically three scores, and you just can't keep running the ball. You just at that point you do it just enough to try to keep them off balance. But if you're not throwing the ball, you don't have a chance. And we'd be going for fourth downs, but when we're in our own, when we're on our own thirty, it's fourth and fourteen. Um, you know that's a very low, very 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 low percentage play, uh, unfortunately. Um, so either way. That happens when you get behind by three scores. What did Bowman do this week in practice to earn that starting role again uh, this week? Um, they practiced good. All of them practiced good. Yeah, um, not anything different. Rangel uh, missed a, a practice this week. Um, he's under the weather a little bit. Other than that, everything was normal. Last couple. You mentioned the, the crowd to start. What did you make of the booze during Bowman's last possession? And then the standing ovation during Gunner's first uh, when he walked down the field the first time. Um, you know, I don't really notice a lot of that. Um, you know, I have one thing off, but I people say those things to me after the game. I don't really notice a lot of that. Um, everybody has opinion. The good thing about our fans is that <clears throat> they want to win and they're used to winning, and um, so sometimes they get frustrated. Like if I was a fan and was watching the game there, I'd be frustrated too. So um, we, we would always want them to support our players, but sometimes they get frustrated, and I understand that, because um, they're used to winning and having a lot of success. That part's a good thing. Mark, you've obviously had lots of games in your career that you've been disappointed by the outcome, you know, losing Big 12 championship game, those sorts of things. But how does this one rank in terms of just your, your level of disappointment when you talk about team practice well. I mean, just all the things that sort of tiled up to then what happened. In well, game. you know, we play 12 seasons, right? We, we, we get, we're a win, win, loss, pass, fail every week. We failed this week. Last two weeks we passed. Uh, that's college football. And so I'm disappointed because without watching the video, I don't think that our, our game plans on either side of the ball were very good. That part disappoints me. Now, I'll have to watch tape and try to confirm it, but I get disappointed with that because I want to hold those guys accountable with the concepts and the game plans we have. We certainly have to continue to try to rush the ball, and then defensively we have to stop the run. Good? Okay.